This is Create the Next from Pro CFO Partners, where every week we explore strategies and ideas for financial management and growth to help today's businesses put their financial picture in context. Chris Bitliff, back with you today from Create the Next from Pro CFO Partners. I'm with Carlos Sava. And Carlos, today we are talking about valuation. And let's start with just some essentials. How do you define valuation or how do you coach our listeners or your clients to think about valuation of their company? What is their business worth? What are some essentials that you're thinking about when we're trying to figure that out? Let, let's maybe break that question up uh, into a couple smaller, more more digestible pieces. So Great. What, what valuation is, is think of the word worth. What is something worth? And we all know what the, the stock price, uh, the, the stock market does, and that gives a price, but a price is not necessarily a value. A value is what it what it's worth, uh, as opposed to just a price, which can sometimes move and, and oscillate for too many reasons. So when I think about valuation and what does what is a business worth, I think about in a particular situation. Usually, if you were to sell all of this business. How much would an educated, willing party pay for it? Now, we then are are bringing in a couple of new words Mm. that are going to send this conversation into, could send this conversation into a variety of directions, and that's who, the party, right? Yeah. And and who is going to be involved in the other side of a transaction is going to matter a lot for an ultimate transaction. But when you think about and want to understand what's your business worth, I think about it in in three parts. I think about your financials, I think about your infrastructure, and I think about your strategic value. Financial, and, infrastructure, and strategic value. All right. And sort of going up the 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 three Financials is the easiest to understand. Do you, do you make money? Do you have profits? Do you have profits that may be defined as EBITDA, which is often a, a financial metric, which is your earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And some people will use that as a proxy for cash flow. It's not the best, but it's also how the industry uh, uh, industries are, are often going to be devalued. Hmm. So you have to work with and understand that that construct. Of, so what what are my my profits? Be it a, a net income or a pre tax profit or uh, something even higher in the income statement like an EBITDA. What are my revenues? Are they growing? That's a big thing. Size is also very, very important. So um, when we were talking about EBITDA, we'd often be talking about multiples. And somebody's going to get paid for a multiple of their their EBITDA, and that's what the price of the business is worth. So let's say your business generates $2 million in EBITDA. Well, then you get a four times multiple on your business, two times four is eight. Okay, your business is worth eight times, $8 million. Hmm. Pretty, pretty simple arithmetic there. But we find that in many industries, size matters. So if you were to have a business that generated 20 million in EBITDA, not only would you be getting the four times that a smaller business might get, you might actually get seven times EBITDA Hmm. because size is going to be at a premium. When your business is only generating a a million or so in in profits, it it might not be as sustainable as a business that's able to generate eight million in profits. Sure. So that longevity and that sustainability is going to play a, a big part in um, what the what the value and the multiple assigned to it will be. So we've got your your profits, your size based on on revenue, and your growth as the three biggest financial factors that 
that a buyer is going to look at or that I would look at when when valuing a company. So I imagine fine, uh, reporting is important in this uh, area because you've got to know as, as specifically as you can what those things are. And a lot of organizations struggle with having really accurate reporting. So before I, I need to figure out my valuation as I'm trying to think about it, I kind of need to make sure that my reporting is on point. Is that true? Yes and no. Okay. So Dan uh, did a previous, Dan Bartlett did a previous podcast on this and he is absolutely correct. However, private businesses do not always operate with the intention and expectation of selling. So it's, I would be more concerned with are the processes there rather than are the numbers right? Because at first, the numbers won't be right. You will have business owners that are going to be expensing things that may or may not really be uh, 100% business expenses. It's it's just what business uh, owners do to, to minimize their taxes. Interesting. Um, so I would... Um, I care more about the, in, in when working with a company, I care more that the infrastructure is there and we can move things around for future years to build, to build value and ensure that it's, it's captured correctly in the future. Okay, walk me through your other two uh, criteria for valuation. Yeah, so the, the next part of the hierarchy is the, the infrastructure, which I also include your, your resources and, and processes. And processes is something that I just, I just touched on for uh, an accounting department, and that is how well uh, they operate, how organized they are, how quickly they can close the, the periods, uh, et cetera. But your, your resources are going to include your, your team, all of the knowledge that you've built up and industry expertise, uh, your culture, being able to retain retain that team. Um, so that's really a layer that that can do both help and hurt you. Um, if if the resources, the processes, and the infrastructure is there, and that would go to to Dan Bartlett's point about your financial reporting being important. Once you're getting to the point of actually doing a transaction, yes, because. The, the only real lever or mechanism that a, a buyer is going to have is to discount, to pay less. Mm. So if they don't have faith in the numbers, they're going to say, well, maybe the numbers are off by 25%. So my price should be off by 25%. That's really the only mechanism that, that they have. However, if you've got good resources, good processes, good infrastructure, um, teams there. I've seen businesses bought for the people. Yeah, interesting. Well, and we see that a lot in technology, for instance, um, where the IP and the, the talent, the aqua hire, you know, uh, comes into play, where it's really the minds of the people involved and the culture even that drives uh, the business that is most interesting to the buyer. And that's a, a great segue into what the, the third area of, of where you can find value and where you can uh, sometimes get valuations that make no sense to, to a, an outside party. And that's the strategic value. Strategic value. The strategic value is what is this business, what is this asset going to be worth in the hands of somebody that can do more with it? Yeah. So... Um, you mentioned a, a technology company. Well, imagine if I've got a, an app that I'm struggling to build up. But imagine if I had the, the, the brand and the user base of Apple suddenly behind it. Well, it's going to be worth a whole lot more to, to Apple and they can turn, it in, can turn it into an overnight success. So now what's the, what's the value of such, a, such an asset? It could be significantly more if the business acquiring it has a strategic advantage of what they can do with this, with this asset. The other example that, that comes to mind 
was when Walmart bought Jet, which was a, a online market marketplace that was reaching a younger demographic. Walmart was struggling with online shopping and moving to, to e-commerce. This was a few years ago, but they paid a, an insane multiple for, for that company. And it's because that company had something that Walmart wanted. It wanted uh, those customers and that knowledge of how to market online. Okay, so now my financials are in order. What is my business worth? Yeah, great, great question, Chris. So it's going to depend on the, the factors we mentioned before of your profitability, your revenue and the size, and how you're growing. But other things that are going to factor in are the environment or the market, if you will, for your industry trends that are happening in your your industry capital that's allocated to to your industry and whether or not there's investor appetite for it we we obviously know things get hot and cold uh, based on various parts of the glo- global economy and and what's getting me- even media attention as to what what sectors are going to be uh, attracting, attracting buyers. So we've got financials, infrastructure, and, and kind of strategic vision. How, what a couple of interesting things to me in that is if all three of those things are on point for me as a business, even if I have no intention of selling, I'm going to run a better business. If, if I have those things on lock, I'm going to be doing just a better job. But it's also a lot of work to do those things. And, and sometimes we get one pretty good or maybe two and a half pretty good. So if, how, how useful is it for me to think of my valuation, even if I have no plans to sell or no suitors out there who are wondering about it? Should I always be thinking about this in my business? This is all I think about really for the companies that I work with is how to make them worth more. That's it. That, that's why the, the companies I work with hire me it is because of my expertise in understanding what they're worth and what are the things that can be done to them to make them worth more. So, you know, so let, let's stick with the, this hierarchy because I think you, you almost glossed over something that was important without, okay. without realizing it. These three things you'll often address separately, but they are totally tied together mm. and, and inextricably woven, if you will. Um, so your resources and infrastructure are going to absolutely drive your your profits. And I can come up with all the great strategies in the world for a, a company, but if I don't have a great team to execute it, it it's, it's not worth anything. So often you end up, I end up tackling these with really simple, simple questions. And it might be for a business owner, if God forbid something happened to you and you were unable to come to work for two months or you were fortuitous and got to take a two month vacation, do you have people in place that could run this business without you? Mm-hmm. Often it, it, it's the answer is no. Yeah. Um, so that's you know a, a very simple example of how the, the these can be tied together and how you can then want to focus the business so that I've now taken a really basic question: What happens if I want to go on vacation as a CEO? And now I'm focused on I need to find a good number two. I need to train somebody to make crucial decisions when I'm not. Uh, available to the company. Carlos Sava from Pro CFO Partners. I feel like we've only scratched the surface. I feel like uh, the things you introduced us to, we could dive in to each of those areas for five more episodes each. And I hope that we get a chance to, I hope you'll come back again. Thanks so much for introducing us to this idea of valuation and making it so easy to understand. I love your three sort of principles or ways to think about things. And I also love that as usual, if we can focus on those things 
just independently, we're going to run a better business. And if we can understand the relationships, the context that this one has to this one has to this one, we're going to build a stronger business. And that will inevitably make the conversation about valuation easier and and help our companies be worth more. But it just helps us build better companies. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for watching. And a special thanks to our subscribers. Consider becoming one today. Visit ProCFOPartners.com for more strategies and ideas for financial management and growth to help you put your business's financial picture in context.